nice to see you again. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so today I think what would be nice to talk about is about pressing a jacket or at home. Yes, yes. So the extent to which customers out there, readers can yeah. take their own jacket and do some of their own pressing, trying to take out those wrinkles, etc. Yes. Now, um, when would you suggest that someone kind of presses it at home? Is it just when there's they see particular wrinkles, or I would. It's when it's when you see really obvious wrinkles, Simon. Sort okay. Of in the sleeve area here, this is this is worn. If there's a little bit of puckering on the front edge, so yeah, you know, pretty obvious signs actually. Okay. And it, depending on the fabric, um, some fabrics obviously going to perform and last in that area a little bit better than others. Right. So yeah. so really, I would just look at the the creasing of the jacket and, and act act then obviously. Okay. And again, those are the kind of places you would see it, say in the elbow when you're kind of folding. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Elbow here, sort of front edge here, and also when people sit down, sometimes yeah, you see the creasing across the, the, back, the back here, yeah. Simon. So yeah. I, I mean, th those are the sort of the areas that I'd be, I'd be looking for. Okay, fantastic. And is there any disadvantage to doing that more often? Can you can you damage a jacket or cause problems if no, you're pressing you it, it all the no, time? If you do it properly, then right. not at all. As, as long as you use it again, you've got to be mindful of the fabric that you're doing, yeah. um, and the temperature of the iron, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But as long as you use a damp rag, yeah. you know, a cloth on top, fairly damp, then you know you, you should be fine. Okay, great. Um, and then, in terms of what somebody can do at home yes. um, compared to what you do in the shop, I yes. mean, obviously. People can bring in their suits and jackets all the time to have them pressed, pressed here, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is a great service and yes. again, people should do anyway if they can. Indeed. Um, but a lot of readers, you know, they live remotely or yes. you know, they can't come in all the time, yes. so they try and do this at home. What, to what extent can they replicate it? Is it how similar is like a domestic iron to one you would use here, for example? It's, it's a different thing, Simon, because yeah. we've got sleeve board covers, we've got you know, big cushions as well that we can you know, do the collar and the sleeves. Yeah. Um, if we're talking about a, just a domestic set up, a yeah. domestic iron board with a domestic um, um, a domestic iron board with a domestic iron, yeah. then really what I would suggest is stick stick to the real basics actually. Okay. I'd be looking at the front edge through here. Yeah. Okay. I'd be looking at the the shoulder just on top right. of the sleeve head, just but just very lightly. Yeah. Um, and again the straight seams, the centre back seam is really very easy through here. And all yeah. this area you can do You can lay that flat and really can work lay that that quite flat. easily. You okay. can really lay that flat. The vent area you can do all along the bottom. It's the top that's gonna to be a little bit tricky. Right. Just a little bit tricky. Because okay. you don't have the board that's shaped to actually get into those that's holes. Right. Yeah. That's right, that's right. So again around the sleeve head, that kind of area is gonna to be tough. That's it is really, okay. yeah. It is really uh, without us, you know, showing you how to to, to do it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah, and in the actual the actual irons that someone might have at home. Mm. How is that? Is it that it has less heat than one you'd have here, or is it about less steam, or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. A little bit okay. of both. I mean, you know, what we have over here, we have a very powerful steam iron. Right. So you know, that that that, that really does work very well. The domestic irons is only. If my domestic iron is anything, anything to go by, only about um, sort of five eighths, three quarters of what, what right. the power we have here. Okay. And also this, this, the, you know, the, the pressure of the steam and the and the board, you know, the, the pressure of the um, steam board as well. Right. Okay. All, all adds up to uh, you know quite quite a big difference actually, Simon, to the end result. Right. And so if somebody's looking to get a to get a domestic iron which they can use, it's it's the greater output of steam that's perhaps the most important thing. If they can find one with a greater output, that's going to make it help. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. And, and the, the weight of it as well, Simon. And the right. Yeah. Yes, okay. Because that, that's important. And it just means that disadvantage means you're just going to, it's going to be harder to take out deep wrinkles, basically. You're just not going to have quite the power that you would with something here. Okay, so perhaps something light is going to be fine, but if it's really deep and really hard, creased, yeah. then perhaps it's going to yeah. be tricky. I mean, the domestic irons really, I mean, they're, they're, they're great for shirts. If you think of it, yeah, yeah great yeah, for yeah. shirts and domestic irons. But yeah. obviously, if you're looking at um, uh, a jacket, you've got, the, you've got the fabric, you've got the canvas inside, you've got the felt and the horsehair and the lining. So you've yeah. got four different layers. So to go through, yeah, yeah, okay. that's right. They're really geared up for um, for shirtings rather than rather than suitings. Okay, but, but fine. the basics you can do properly. Fine. Okay. Well, let's let's go over now and kind of see how it's done here, and then see yeah. how we can replicate some of that process for people at home. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, Richard, we're looking now at the process of starting to press yeah. the outside of the sure. of the jacket. Um, now we're using uh, a special board there for the sleeve that these sleeve board cover. Yeah, yeah, sleeve board. Yep. I mean, actual in terms of that board, it's going to be not that dissimilar to what someone might might have at home. It's no. just going to be the shape that's different, really, right? That's right. Right. Okay. And now the pressing again. So we're using again. We've talked about how the the iron is different, um, and you're pressing the sleeve, and you putting something between the material and the iron? Why is, why is that? We are, I mean really to stop any glossing or scorching. 
Okay. I mean, glossing, you know, when you see it is more prevalent in blues, navies, you know, when you see that shininess that, you know, you see on sort of some suits. Right. So by putting uh, a damp rag, uh, what we use, we use some silesia there, which is wet through, placed on top of the fabric, um, and, uh, and that prevents, I, first of all, scorching, the little sort of brown form marks you can see on maybe you know mm -hmm. more grey fabrics yep. and glossing on blues. Right. Uh, so that that rectifies that. And you know you can use a tea towel at home, you know a cotton tea towel, but make sure it's it's, it's nicely damp, not not soaking wet, but nicely right. damp. So you sort of spray it with some water or something, just give it a little bit of dampness. Uh, to be to be quite honest with you, yep. like, I I put the tea towel in in, in water and wring it out. I do it. That right. Way. I do okay. it that way, obviously. Um, and you can see Michael's pre pressing the sleeve there starts at the top of the sleeve um, he's not putting a crease in the front of the sleeve like military style he's, he's pressing sort of the meat of the of the sleeve all right the way through there so you want to make sure you don't go to the edge and then create a kind of crease that you don't want that's right unless yes, yes, you want that military crease yes. on it okay but, uh, yeah but no we, we don't we don't do that here okay and then the sleeve was one area that you said we talked earlier about ways in which you areas you could do fairly safely mm. at home and a sleeve you can do fairly easily right because you you're, can. you're basically pressing that flat as long as you're not going to the edges as long as you're not going to the edges and right. if, if you can manipulate the sleeve all as you see there that Michael's doing as well and get it nice and flat then then that, that, that's the correct way to do it right oh yeah because I, I suppose it, it's very important you get it's taught across the board at it all is. times it's got to be right? taught you're absolutely right it's got to be taught all, all the time yeah so almost half the effort is actually arranging the jacket in the right oh, way is. and making sure that it's flat yeah preparation you can see how Michael's continually moving it um, stretching the fabric, you know, the damp rag is going to go back on, he's going to have a bit more water here. Um, and it, it's, it's a constant um, m manipulation and movement of the garment. Right, okay. As Michael works around the coat. Yeah. And so, yeah, that uh, he's putting a bit more water on. Um, yeah. That's to deal with to some st possible stains as well? It is, yes, it is. I mean, he might have seen something there, a little spot, so he's just putting it, a simple um, dab of water on there and then, and then steaming it off. Right, and okay. the side seems especially um, susceptible to that. Right, okay. And he's so he's working the side seams, the back of the jacket now. Yep. And again, someone at home could quite easily they can do, as we said, sort of certainly the the lower half or two thirds of the front of the jacket and the whole back pretty the straightforward. Really on quite this easy. The back, yeah. really, I mean, you can see the centre back seam there, Simon. Again, the cloth goes down. Uh, again, you've got to keep the the um, back taut. So again, he'll be constantly pulling the, the bottom of the back. Um, it's the centre back seam is really quite easy. Those straight seams are, are easy to do. Okay. And it, he's not pressing that hard, is the amount no. of pressure going on now? I mean, it's quite a heavy to. iron though, isn't it? There's enough pressure in the iron, Simon. Right, there's okay. Enough, in, in this iron, there's enough pressure. So someone at home might want to press a little bit hard, perhaps. Just a wee get, bit. Yeah. Be, be mindful of that. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, but there isn't that much risk of damage in the cloth if you've got something between the two. As long really. as you've got the damp rag and, and you're constantly monitoring that. Right, okay. And again, there's no, I mean, you, it's a bit like ironing a shirt in terms yeah. of the actual speed you might use. I mean, he's just making sure he's getting all the creases up. Basically, it doesn't matter if he's doing it particularly fast or particularly slow. No, it's all about the end result, of course. And some coats will take Michael a little bit longer to press because of the, um, the nature of the fabric. Um, but really and truly, Michael will press a full press. Um, it would take him 35 to 40 minutes to do one properly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, as I said, yeah, at home it will be a slightly different process, yeah. just freshening up and seeing those creases and trying to get rid of them, yeah. but nonetheless you still want to take your time with doing that very yeah. well as well. Yeah. Okay. Does it work? I suppose it's probably worth someone practicing on an old suit or jacket first. I mean, that's first. the great thing. I'm just going yeah. to say that. that that's the, the great way to do it. Something that doesn't really matter. Maybe a tweed, an old tweed, mm. something like that, um, before you get onto the lightweight blues and that sort of thing. Um, but no, that, that's the way to proceed, yes. Right, okay. And I think... Um, then you'll see later when he's doing the pressing the chest or pressing the top of the sleeve, for example. Then he's using that kind of pillow. He is. Yeah. To to kind of get that curved shape. That's right. Now that's the kind of thing that's going to be much harder for someone to yeah. do at home yeah. using that pillow. Yeah. Now, um, I suppose you can do that a little bit, kind of using the very tip of the ironing board at home, just because a little bit of a curve there. There's a limit to what you can do, obviously. I mean, the cushion that we use is a fabulous um, piece of kit that Taylor's been using for years, actually. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you can manipulate uh, shoulders and sleeves and collars on that, you know, really, really nicely. Um, so domestically, you can see when the film comes up. I'm sure it's not. Uh, um, too much of a stretch f to use maybe a domestic um, cushion to do that even though this is really quite hard actually mm. this is really quite robust yeah um, but no you're right you can to a certain extent use the end of the ironing board the curve of the ironing board yeah. to achieve some of the results that Michael gets there right okay and then the, ri the thing you're gonna lack is you just not is there any risk to sort of damaging the shape of the chest to do that too much is that there the is. risk you're running if yeah. you look at the round see the round we get on 
see yes. the, ra- the round that we, we achieve there and see how beautifully that fits into the chest. Yeah. So that's where you're going to, that's what you're going to miss with a flat surface. Right, okay. So just kind of just be very cautious basically about doing yeah. that to make sure you don't alter yeah. the shape of it too yeah. much. Great, okay.